Hey YouTube, it's Floyd Fan since 2000 with another review for True Blood Season 7, Episode 8, entitled Almost Home. This episode was okay. Um, had some unnecessary scenes, but overall it was a pretty good episode. So let's get into it. I first want to start off with Eric and everything that happened with him, Suki, and you know, the Hep V storyline. Eric comes and grabs Sarah Newland, and I'm getting ready to kill her until Pam threatens to kill herself. She's like, Eric, if you die, I die. And so he, can, you know, decides not to kill her, but to actually drain her so that he can heal. Now, when he takes the blood and he starts kind of stiffening up, and I'm like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I hope he doesn't die. Because, you know, when they have heavy V and they stiffen up, it kind of, they kind of melt and die and Instead of that, he heals and he's just laughing and I'm so happy and you know, his veins disappear and he's not, you know, he doesn't have head V anymore. Um, him and the Asian guy, they go back to Fantasia and the Asian guy tells him how hard it is to synthesize Sarah's blood and, you know, Pam doesn't understand. She's like, you know, I really don't understand you guys synthesize her blood you know, before, and, or you, you, um, made True Blood before, why aren't we rolling in cash, you know, what are you saying, he's, he's saying, her blood is already, uh, synthesized, we can't really do any more, and I don't believe that, I believe they're trying to BS Eric, and they really, you know, I don't trust them, I think they're lying, they just don't want him to be in on the new deal they want to make, they want to have, you know, the new blood with the heavy antidote in it, but, you know, they, they really don't want to do it right, so, um, Eric comes to see Suki, and you know, basically she sees that he's cured. And um, you know she she wonders, you know, how and what happened. He says, you know, I um got cured. I can't tell you how, but um, you know, there's a cure now. And she tells him that Bill is sick. So anyway, uh, Eric finds out that Bill has had V, and basically Suki's just like, tell me about the cure, please tell me, tell me, I, he needs, you know, the cure right now, please, he's just like, I, I'll come back, come back tomorrow night, I can't tell you anything, but you know, just, I'll be patient, I'll be right back, but Suki, you know, she's just in a panic, doesn't want to lose Bill, and she's just like, tell me, you know, tell me what's going on, I, I, I need to, he doesn't have all, all day and all night. So basically she, basically, she follows him to Fantasia. She shows up there, and he has to pretend as if she's just a fang bang and whore that means nothing to him. And that, um, basically, um, he pretends to glamour her and says that, you know, you never saw me. Go back to where you came from. And she overhears the Asian guy's thoughts and hears him say something about, oh, he wouldn't screw me over. I don't believe him. I don't believe her. And, you know, something special down in a dungeon. And she basically is just like, oh, something in a dungeon has to do with the cure. And she goes and she uses her little, little uh, glow light, glow hands or whatever to open up that, that um, wall or whatever so she can get into the Fantasia um dungeon and she finds Sarah Newland and for me I was like please Suki don't let her go Sarah Newland tells her how she you know always liked her and how she needs to be you know let go let her out and basically um Suki's just like anything coming out of your mouth I don't believe she reads her and finds out that Eric got healed by drinking some some of her blood and she's just like you're the cure and she goes and brings um brings uh Bill and Jessica and Jessica's getting ready to kill Sarah because of what she did last season trying to get uh James to rape her and all the dirty mess she did but um so, you know they're trying to talk her down not to kill you know Sarah Newland because she's the cure and everything and um Eric is just a little bit upset with so he's like what point did you not understand I will come to you and, you know, Bill tells him, oh, you look good, you look, you know, well. He's just like, thanks, I'm feeling well. And basically, they're like, okay, drain a girl, hurry up before the Asian people come back. We've got you some time, hurry up and drain her. And he just says, no, I don't I don't want the blood. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, Bill, don't tell me you're going to get killed. Don't tell me you want to die. 
I hope he doesn't get killed. I really hope this is just a monkey wrench and the, the plot or the the um story points. I really hope he doesn't get killed. I love Bill. I don't want him to get killed off and I want him and Suki to end up together. But on the previews look like uh Eric and Suki end up together, but who knows? We only have two more episodes and I would be really crushed and surprised if they killed off Bill. Um I hope that doesn't happen. Okay, James shows up to see Lala, the Reverend, and Letty Mae in the old house where Terrell grew up. And basically, he's there to, you know, help them V-trip because they want to follow Terrell on this journey where she's leading him. I don't know. Basically, the Reverend doesn't want to believe it, but he wants to help them. So, he drinks of the blood and they all V-trip. They find out that is Terrell is showing them the day where... She had a birthday party and her father showed up, basically ruined the party, got into it with her mother and um, got mad because he didn't know anything about the party, got mad because she bought Tara a cake and didn't know where she got the money from. They get into it and she, you know, the father's looking for the cake, I mean not the cake but the gun. She says, I don't know where your gun is and we find out that Tara has the gun and um... We find out that she she aims the gun at her father. And I'm like, oh my god, did she kill her father? She doesn't, you know, shoot, but she buries the gun. And um, basically, her father leaves, and her mother just kind of uh, breaks down because she doesn't want her father to leave. She kind of thinks, you know, she can't do anything without him. And if you ask me, it would have been better off if he left. You know, but I guess she's just one of those women that just has to have a man. And, you know, she felt like she couldn't go on without him. And that's why she started drinking. And, um, you know, basically she told her mother, you are a good mother. I regret the day I didn't, you know, pull the trigger and kill him. You know, you were a good mother and you need to let me go. You know, you need to stop punishing yourself for not being there for me. You were there for me. You did the best you could. Your addiction took over, but you, you tried to do things the right way. And, you know, this whole storyline for me, I'm so glad it's over. I feel like they're trying to just pacify us with what happened with Tara and her being killed off. So uh, anticlimactic. And um, I just felt like it could have been a better, you know, plot device. Uh, maybe they left some money for Lenny Mae or something buried there with a gun. And the whole story was just kind of like, okay, you know, um, happy it's over. Wasn't really here for it. Hoy and Bridget get into a fight because she's looking through Hoy's old, you know, pictures and he's just kind of being, you know, negative. He's drunk and he's just, she mentions the fact that she wants to have kids and, and he's like, what kids? I didn't say anything about kids. And they get into this whole argument and Jason gets a, a text message from Violet saying that she has Jessica and that she's going to kill her. He's, he calls Andy and Holly. He's like, I got to go. It's, you know, police business, very dangerous. And Bridget her stupid self says okay i'm coming with i don't want to stay here i just want to go with you and i was just like really bridget you're so dumb you don't know him it's dangerous yet you want to go just because you're mad at hoy i feel like she was overreacting a little bit but anyway she gets in the car with with jason jason tries to tell her you can't come with this is dangerous Hoyt tries to apologize, but she still goes. They get to the place, and he tells her, you know, stay in the car, gives her a gun with, you know, the silver or the wooden bullets in it. And, um, you know, he goes in, gets attacked, and, and you know, uh, Violet finds him, ties him up. And basically, she has all these torture things that she wants to do. She wants to stick a um, hot penis in Jessica because she was a, a virgin when she got uh, turned and how she wants them to feel the pain she felt when he slept with Vi when he slept with uh, Jessica. And I was just kind of like, oh my God, if somebody please kill her. And, you know, she was just like, all I ever wanted was for you to be faithful to me. All I ever wanted was you and you just broke me and I can't believe this. And right when she says that, who comes and kills her? Hoyt. I was so happy. You know, he kills her and she melts and all that. He, um unties everybody and Jessica is just really surprised and happy to see him um basically you know Andy and Holly come and they're happy to see that everybody's alive so am I didn't want Jessica to die so happy Violet is dead um 
Jessica reintroduces herself to Hoyt. He's just like, okay, hi, my name is Hoyt. And, you know, Bridget kind of asks JC, you know, what, go, what went on between Jessica and Hoyt, or what, what went on between him and Jessica, and, you know, is that his girlfriend? And she, he basically says, I don't know what to call her, you know, at this point. And I was just like, I hope Jason and Bridget don't end up sleeping together. They kind of seem like they're getting awfully close, but... You know, I don't think that's going to happen. At least I'm hoping not. Uh, Jason and Hoyt have this convo in Marlots. I mean, not Marlots, but the Bell Floors. And basically, um, he tells him that he wasn't up all night thinking about his mama and thinking about uh, Bridget. But he just couldn't stop thinking about the red the girl Jessica. And he was just like, really, man? He said, you know, that's why... I when I don't want to think, I just don't. I don't think. And he laughs it off, and I'm just like, well, we already know that, Jason. You don't think. And, um, basically, um, that's what happens with that. Um, he, you know, Jason tells him about her uh, maker, Bill, Diana Hep V, and how, you know, he was the only father she had. He feels some type of way about it, and he goes to see Jessica, um, and I felt like him being glamoured is what helped him uh, kind of have a normal life. Because he, if he had a came back, knowing that Jessica and, and Jason did that to him, he would have he would have been so he would have been so more angry and re, more resentful. He wouldn't have even wanted to speak to Jason. He probably would have killed Jason or Jessica. So the fact that they glamoured him kind of helped him. Um, you know, have a relationship with them or somewhat, you know, have have a, a sit down and talk moment with them because he wouldn't have did that if he knew what happened. And, um, you know, kind of shows that no matter what he's glamoured or not, he still has a thing for Jessica. Jessica still has a thing for him. And um, he goes to see Jessica, gives her some blood to give to, v give to Bill. And um, basically um, they have this moment where she asks him, do you miss your mother? He starts crying and says, yes and no, yes and no. He's just like, it doesn't matter how old you are. Whenever you lose a parent, it always makes you want to go back and, and kind of relive your childhood. And I'm um, sorry. And, you know, she basically was like, yeah, I know what you mean. He was like, it's kind of a blessing that I didn't know my mom was going to die. Because, you know, it came all of a sudden and I didn't have to watch her die like you do with Bill. And she was just like, yeah, you know, I understand where you're coming from. You know, and they kind of bond over that moment. That moment was, that that scene was a little unnecessary to me. I'm kind of, I guess they did it for Hoyt and Jessica fans, which I kind of am or used to be a fan. But ever since the whole Jason sleeping with Jessica I'm a little over and I don't understand why they gave us that scene. I don't want them to get back together. Nothing in this world will want me to for Jessica and Hoyt to get back together. I'm not here for it. But you know, they have that little moment and she asks, when are you leaving? He says, day after the, tomorrow, I got to get back to work. She was like, you're right in Alaska. And, and basically he says, I got to get back to Bridget. And um, he leaves. Anyway, that was the end of the episode. This episode was pretty good. Can't wait to see what's going to happen. And in the last two episodes, I've been true to the, to the very end with True Blood. Even though I disagree with a lot of things they've done. I'm going to continue to watch. Hope you continue to watch my reviews. Hope you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter at O's Midnight Love. And that's O-S underscore Midnight underscore L-U-V. Also follow me on Instagram at DrinkMeUp21. The links will be in the more info box. And I'll see you in my next video.